and welcome to Frankly Speaking with Frank Portinari, the podcast that gains access to real and inspiring people. Before I introduce you to today's guest, MMA fighter Chrissy Mountford, I'd just like to make a few announcements. Firstly, uh, we welcome our sponsor, Casual Minds, uh, designers and distributors of quality clothing. Uh, we'll be working together with Casual Minds uh, to support the campaign that they're equally supporting, which is Casual Minds Matter. Uh, I am actually wearing one of their shirts uh, and uh, they've been having regular meetings in, in Burnley on a Monday evening uh, and it's, uh, it, it's growing every week. Uh, we're happy to support that and uh, anything we can do to publicise their events or support any other similar campaigns around the country, then uh, please feel free to contact us and uh, I will certainly mention it. Um, one of the messages is basically checking in on male mental health. Uh, and we know that's a subject that men are not very comfortable speaking about. Um, hopefully this will give them an opportunity to, uh, to be able to converse with people. Uh, we sincerely like to thank all those who've been following Frankly Speaking. We would like people to subscribe uh, a bit more if they can, please, and, and to, to like uh, on behalf of our guests mainly. Our guests are good enough to come on, tell us their stories, uh, and we'd like that to be recognised. And equally, it will encourage other people to come on and tell their real inspiring stories as, as well. What I would like to announce is the fact that we are now available in audio on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. So just those for those who prefer not to, you know, to watch it on YouTube, that's just another choice that they've got. We'd also like to acknowledge the amazing work done by the Alzheimer's Society, uh, the support that they give victims and their families. And uh, we also like to mention Change Your Life, Put Down Your Knife, the anti-knife campaign. On this occasion, we particularly like to mention Ben Spann, who is fundamental to that organisation. Uh, our understanding is, is that Ben uh, has, has travelled to Ukraine uh, to help uh, the citizens of Ukraine. So we wish him uh, all the best. Uh, we hope he remains safe. And, uh, and he returns to his family and us as soon as possible. Equally, I'd like to thank Matt the Hat for his technical support and advice. Uh, but let's get down to business and let's welcome today's guest, Chrissy Mountford. Chrissy, welcome to Frank Speaking. Hi, Frank, you're on, mate. Yeah, nice to catch up with you again, just, for the, just to let the viewers know, uh, myself and Chrissy met. A few months back in London, he, him and his uh, young lady, his wife, were yeah. visiting the capital. And of all the people he bumped in, it had to be me. So uh, <laughs> we, we decided to, to catch up again and uh, have a conversation. And uh, we appreciate Chrissy coming along today and, uh, and having a nice. conversation with us. Chrissy, yeah, nice. what, what we'd like to do to start off with is, is just tell us a bit about your, your early life, maybe start off uh, for a start where you, you know where'd you come from yeah um so i grew up um in a place called cobridge and um stoke on trent um cobridge was um well it, it says like known as one of the rougher areas in stoke on trent um there was like sort of four streets and um, that they're, they're all like terraced houses that and at the top of the streets was like a park that covered like all four streets of the park like right at the top and uh, some, you know, some mad things happened in that park. Um, grew up with, um, you know, my, my family, um, like a proper working class family. My old man um, was a grafter, you know, just went out and worked, provided for us. My mum was, um, you know, more of a housewife, just took care of us. Um, you know, me, I've got, a, I've got a sister who's slightly older than me and a younger brother. Um, so yeah, we were just like a, just a real working class family from a working class, class area. Coming from uh, coming from Stoke, were you a, a Stoke or are you a Stoke City supporter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I started following the football um, towards the end of high school, really. Um, probably about the age of like 
14, 15, started going to football. Um, Stoke was my team because it was my old man's team. Yeah. Um, started going, you know, with the lads and, um, you know, sort of traveling a little bit, getting in a little bit of trouble and stuff. But um, yeah, it was, it was good. And then uh, just just now, I, I still go now, I still go the match now. But now, now if I go like, I'll take the messies or, you know, just, just kind of just go, go and watch it somewhere quiet like. Yeah. Myself and Gary, we we um, we travelled to Tottenham playing playing Port Vale. Clearly, your oh, rival, yeah. you know your traditional yeah. rival, yeah, um, yeah. in a cup game back in the eighties, and uh, we we pulled up in a, in a pub in Stoke, and uh, the the governor of the pub said, uh, "You know, you're miles away." We said, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. We're in Stoke, we we, we didn't realise that Port Vale played in Burslem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd never heard of it. We, we, we you know, we yeah. never heard of first of them. So we had to get back on the coach and uh, yeah. hurry up and just about got into the, into the game. Like, you know, I might mention this more. Yeah. Than, uh, yeah. It wasn't a good day for us, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's what, exactly, what that's exactly. what you, do you remember that? It was 2-1 we lost, basically. Yeah. It was 2-1. Um, so what was your school life like? Um, School life. It, school life was funny uh, for me because... I was, I was like a, a, quite an intelligent kid that just couldn't like I couldn't focus, you know. Like I was always um, a little like a little bit of the class clown, um, you know, just always up to no good, mischief and stuff, getting into fights, um, you know, getting you know getting excluded. Um, but the teachers seemed to have a bit of a soft spot for me as well, so they were never too harsh on me. Um, I always felt like I could win them round a little bit. Um, just just being mischievous, really. Um, like I come away with my GCSEs, um, like, but towards the end of school, there were certain lessons like that I wasn't allowed into because of how disruptive I was. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's, it's like, I think it was um, like English, like the, the teacher wouldn't allow me in. Like there was no teacher that allowed me into the English lesson, but it's just because I couldn't I couldn't just focus in that subject. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just always being mischievous in that lesson. And then, like, there was no English teacher that had me in the class. Um, but I still still managed to get a C in, in like, the GCSE. I don't think we yeah. before I'd get that back. Um, and, yeah, like I say, it was just, um, I was always just trying to make people laugh. But there's, like, little bits of trouble here and there where I was getting excluded and stuff. <laughs> Just a tip, I, just a I, typical I, lab, you know. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes think we, they should include in the curriculum that you get some kind of certification for being the class clown. Yeah. <laughs> it seems yeah. to be quite a popular concept when uh, when we talk to people and we, and we get onto this subject about education, you know. Yeah. And uh, I know I can certainly identify with it, that's for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that was, and the other thing as well, it's like, you know, some people from a, a young age know what they want to do. Like, I never, I never knew what I wanted to do. And I think, you know, from being from like a, you know, like like the working class sort of area, and you know, like that kind of family, it was just you always just kind of like um, channel just for, you know, you just had to get a job, didn't you? Do you know what I mean? It was never about, it was never about like what career you're gonna go for, you know, mm -hmm. and like having like conversations about business or like going and getting a degree and moving on to something. It was just like, you know, I was just drifting through school, just thinking like, at the end of this, I'll just get a job and just get by. You know, there was never any sort of, I can never really remember having like a focus of, right, I've got to go and do these GCSEs. And then once I've done that, I can go and get a degree and then I can go and do this job and earn this much money. Those conversations went had with, with me as a kid and it wasn't through, you know, like, like my parents were brilliant. You know, it wasn't that. It was just like, we, we just went that way. You know, I, I don't think... I don't think anybody in my family's, you know, been and, and studied at a at a high level, yeah. you know, like university level. So those conversations weren't had. So I think, you know, that meant that through like primary school and high school, like, you know, I just cru cruised by and just, you know, make had a laugh, really. Mm. Did you do the full term, so to speak? Did you or did you leave early or yeah, I mean the, the final year of school um was tough. Um it, like because like my mum my mum passed away when I was 14, 15, which was like the last year of school. So I, I went through like a bad bit of a bad time in my last year, which is obviously the year of the GCSEs and stuff. Um, you know, I had to have like a lot of counselling. Um, so like I was missing lessons to have counselling and stuff at school. Um, so I just completely lost focus 
um, for, you know, for, for like GCSEs and stuff then. Um, but then what I was doing then is like any like school holidays and stuff, I was going out and like working with my dad's mates, um, you know, like painting and decorating, building, um, just whatever, whatever I could do, just earn some pocket money and that. And then um, like because of a lot of the um, lessons I wasn't allowed into and stuff, like I was starting to go out and work more do you know what I mean? So I was going out and, you know, work like kind of like just having a week off and like going work and, and then um, same when I went like after school and I went like to, to do me like my bricklaying apprenticeship. Like I spent like all the any time at college. Cause I was just, you know, it was, it was worth a few more quid to me if I go and like labor yeah. and then, then go and actually get education. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so, yeah. So like the last, last few years were like a, a little bit tougher. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Were you um were you were you quite sporty at school? Did you have sporting interests at school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so through school. So where do I start with this? This is this is this is a good one. This is a good question, really. So, so I got into fight sports young, like real young. Um, so I'll I'll, re- I'll skip back a little bit now too. Yeah. Um, when when I, when I talk about the the park at the uh, across the four streets, so my oldest memory is um, is in that park. And what happened was, I, I there was a, there was a kid that was kind of he was a little bit older than me. I must have been about six seven years old, right? And um, there was there was a kid that was like a little bit older than me, um, pushing me about a little bit. Um, and I wasn't on my own. I was with my dad. Um, but my dad was seen to my brother across the other side of the park. And um, so this kid's pushing me about a little bit. And I was thinking, like, I'm going to have to have a bit of a fight here or something. I'm going to have to, you know, because I was getting a bit bullied and stuff, like pushing, pushing me around and that. So I ended up fighting with this kid, but I was so scared. Um, and I started shouting my dad. So I was shouting, dad, you know, dad, come over, like sort of thing, like trying to get him to come over and sort this fight out. So my dad comes running over. Um, and rather than breaking the fight up, he just kind of stands there and like kind of coaches me through this fight that I'm having with this kid. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and naturally this, this kid's running at me and naturally I've kind of like kicked him, like sort of stuck my leg out. He's fell on the floor and I've jumped on this kid, started, you know, get, punching him a little bit. And then eventually my old man grabs me off. And uh, we're walking home and he's, he sort of said, right, listen, you know, if, if you've knocked him on the floor, son, you know, that's, that's enough now that, you know, you, you knocked him on the floor. Um, you know, you don't need, don't need to do that. Like I, sh- I told you wrong there, son, and, and whatever else. And that's my oldest memory, right? But anyways, where I'm going with this is, um, it wasn't long after that, that I went to kickboxing about six years old. Um, just because then, I think because I had that, I had that little bit of a fight against an older kid, school became a little bit um a, like a little bit difficult <clears throat> so yeah so we so um we get like so so anyways i was getting i was getting back to school um and like i said i don't know if like a bit of a rumor got around that i'd had this fight with this kid um and uh you know i was i was kind of going back home and saying that you know a couple of kids were picking on me and stuff at school um and you know my old man was like a little bit old school and saying right you need you need to fight with these kids um, but my mum was saying, you know, you don't, you need to uh, tell the teachers and stuff. But um, we kind of went down the route of, you know, defending myself and looking after myself. And that's how I got into kickboxing. Um, so then going back into, you know, Frank's question of like, we doing sports through school. Well, I was, that's what I was doing. I was, you know, I was through like primary school, I was doing my kickboxing. And then through high school, I got into boxing and I was like boxing throughout high school. Um, and I was, I was, you know, competing at quite a good level as well, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time, so by the time you left school, what sort of level was you, was you doing both those sports? Yeah. So, um, so I got to, um, so I was kickboxing from about the age of six, um, till about the age of 11. Um, okay. and then to, to actually, um, like box competitively, um, like I think you have to be 11, 11 12 years old. Yeah. Um, so then I, I made the full like swap then to boxing then. So I was just boxing from about the age of eleven, um, 
right the way right the way through. And um, I, I boxed at a good level. I had a lot of matches. Um, boxed abroad a couple of times, like for the country. Um, you know, and 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 you know, I was I was I was at a good level. Um, but you know, it, 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 like I say, just like towards the end, of, like high school. I was getting involved in other things I shouldn't have been getting involved of and uh, involved with. And, uh, you know, it, it did, it did cause a few distractions with me boxing and my boxing training and stuff. My old man was my coach at the time. Um, my mm -hmm. me, me old man's one of the best boxing coaches around here. Um, and, uh, it, it came to a point where I, even me, me and my old man were arguing and stuff. Um, you know, even like when I was going back to the corner after, after a, a round or two, you know, me and my old man were arguing and, uh, you know, so I, I was just kind of lose, losing my head with things a little bit. And, you, you know, you could fit, again, going back to me, my mother's death, you, you probably think that I didn't really grieve properly um, because mm. I, I recall boxing. I, do you know what? I, I don't, throughout her illness, um, like I was boxing consistently. Um, and I can't remember if, I can't remember if I boxed. And, and again, I don't talk about this much and this is why I can't really remember. Um, but I can't remember if I boxed on the day she died and found out afterwards or if I should have boxed on the day she died and I found out and then obviously I didn't box. Um, I, I, I can't remember, but I remember the beat and it was a big fight as well. It was like the final, the, na the nationals and, you know, it, it was a big fight. But And that, so obviously what, what I'm saying is like fruit and I still carried on. I still carried on boxing. Like I boxed a few weeks later, you know, dedicated the fight to my mom and, you know, kind of boxed mm -hmm. right the way through. So never really, um, never really like kind of got around to grieving, I, I guess, and got me, me, my younger brother, look after her and my sister, um, who's older than me. So I kind of saw myself as like trying to just be as level-headed as possible. And, mm -hmm. um, not falling off the wagon, but then that, that kind of cost me then a little bit later on, a few years later, um, started thinking, you know, the, the world owed me a favour and started, you know, fighting in places I shouldn't have been fighting, getting arrested a lot, um, you know, getting in a lot of trouble um, and just, just thinking that the, the world owed me something, I guess. Um, and it, it, it did take, it took a while, it took probably five or six years of, getting arrested, going court, um, you know, and I was lucky, very, very lucky um, once not, not to go jail. Um, and, and there was, you know, there just needed to be a bit of a, a, bit of a turning point, I guess, um, to get things back on track and, you know, get back in, involved in, you know, some positive things. Do you think you've, do you think you've had the opportunity to grieve? Do you think you've done that yet? Um, yeah, well, I don't, I don't know, you know, cause I don't see the, the thing is now it's like, um, talk, talk, talking to you now, I guess it's like, I know I never do this, you know, I never really, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 like speak to people about, about me mum or, or anything really. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's just because, because now I'm in a good frame of mind and, and like a good mindset and, and, uh, you know, like things, things are going, are going well, touch wood, you know, and it's through like blocking a lot of things off um, that, you know, I, I don't really talk, talk about anything like that. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't know. I, I don't really know. Um, I think this, this is the thing, this is the thing with fighting to you, like what I'm doing now, the mixed martial arts. So the, the time of my life that was, that was, wasn't a great time. Um, you know, when there was a lot of trouble and stuff was the time when it wasn't channeling any energy into, you know, any positives. So, you know, like I, I wasn't competing in any, any form of combat. I was just fighting, um, you know, it, I was drinking a lot and um, getting involved in, and in, uh, you know, drugs and stuff. And, you know, it was then like, like there was, just, there was just a day where I was down at um, the Krem, uh, where my mum was buried. And um, I think it was um, like a Mother's Day or, or something like that. And I looked around um, the, the, the Krem and there was just so many kids there, like so many kids visiting the mother's graves. And it just clicked that the world doesn't evolve around me and nobody owes me anything. 
and it's not like and and it, I couldn't just keep on just taking my frustrations out on on the world you know what I mean and going and drowning my sorrows and drink because you know people talk to you don't they and uh, you know they, they make excuses for you when you're up to no good and they'll say oh you know he lost his mum yeah. younger and all that sort of stuff and yeah, they make excuses for you and then you know, before you know it, you, you're doing it every week and you're upsetting people. And, you know, because my old man's such a nice bloke and that, and eventually troubles, you know, started coming back back, back to him, like when I was going court and stuff, and I had to speak to him about things, um, you know, and, and it made his life hard. Um, so then when, obviously, I got, like, back and full, back and full with fighting and, and went into mixed martial arts and stuff, like, obviously, my life's just been 100 miles an hour. Um, and what where I'm going with it is that, like my worry is what's going to happen when I stop doing mixed martial arts. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, nobody knows me better than my missus. Like she's, she's like, she met me when I was like 17 years old. So yeah. she's, she, she's been there and seen it all mate. Like, and she knows like, you know, she knows that I need, I need something. <laughs> And at the moment, it, it is it is fighting. It's mixed martial arts, and it's and like I do need that, um, you know. And it, and and that just that just helps keep me keep my brain occupied, I guess. Yes. You know, keep yeah. me busy because obviously I'm training every day. I'm tired all the time. You know, like I've, I've always got a fight day happening. You've got you know different things like this. You know, go like you know, there's got different mm -hmm. things going on. And I, I you know I don't know what's going to happen when you take that away, like. Am I going to start thinking about things? Am I going to start thinking about my mum and whatever else? You know, I, I don't know. I, hopefully, I can just kind of, if when I do come to finish fighting, hopefully, I can get something else. And so, so what age were you when you started to do it at a competitive level, shall we say, as opposed to just a sport? What sort of yeah. age were you as at the, the MMA side of it? What age were you then? About I was about 24, 25. Okay. And I've been doing it since the last five years. Um, yeah. Um because like I say, there was like there was there was that there was that just four no. How old was I now when I went to, I 17? Yeah, yeah, I was about about 24, 25 when he started doing mixed martial arts competitively. Um and like then do you know what life's life's just clicked nice, like it's just been good and I don't know. I can't. I don't know whether it's because I've turned the corner or whether it's because of the mixed martial arts or, you know, I, I just I don't know where it is. But it's all clicked nice. So now I just like, you know, it's one of them things where I'm just I'm I'm in it now and I and I like I I love it because I don't know. It's just things things are good. Things are normal. I've, I've seen some of your training sessions and uh, yeah, me and Gary have sit this one out. Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done all our training over the years. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, mate. I, yeah. I take my hat off to you. I have an occasional visit to the gym. It doesn't last yeah. very long, but yeah, I, I have a little bit of a spurt every now and again. You know. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah respect to you for all the uh, all the effort and, and, and the training, which uh, dedication, determination, discipline. Yeah. I mean, it's all. It's, yeah. it's clearly all there. You know. And yeah. You certainly, yeah. you certainly look the part. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, so what right. level? What level are we at now? Because I'm mean, I know you've got a big fight coming up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm fighting um, for the Battle Arena World Championship. Mm. Um, I've just I've just won the European Championship. Um, that was in October. Um, that was against a, a guy from uh, from Norway, and I've got a guy coming across from France um, to fight for the World Championship. Um, you know, I still I still work. You know, I'm not earning I'm not earning any 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 mega money. Mm. Um, you know what one thing about fire sports is you know until you kind of make it to the top there's not a great deal of money in it and you usually find that a lot of the guys in fighting are, are all from a very similar background you know and I think um, sadly I, I do think we we, we, we kind of get um, a little bit kind of exposed for that I guess you know like everybody's kind of in fighting because they, they love fighting or they need fighting and I think you know the wages kind of prove that a little bit until you make it to the top until you make it to like I don't know say Conor McGregor's level um you know and, and you're earning millions like there's there's not a great deal of money in it um but yeah I mean you know we'll see how this fight goes and then hopefully I can get you know a, a, an half decent contract and you know maybe earn a few more quid out of it or something. next and, and it's the 19th of March I believe yeah in Birmingham is that right 
Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. mate. Yeah, nice of March. Yeah, Birmingham. What's, what's the venue? You, have you got the name of the venue? Um, I have, yeah, but I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it blows, blows to your head. <laughs> honestly, mate. I, honestly, like, um, they'll come back to me in a minute. I usually fight at the Edge Baston Cricket Ground. I usually fight there, and if I fight in Birmingham, it's usually there. Yeah. And they've just they've changed the vet they've changed the venue and I fought at this venue once before. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. How many rounds do you fight over? Is it 10, 12? No, no. So obviously but the, the the mixed martial arts is slightly different um to uh, to boxing. Um so it's like fight like for a championship fight, it's five rounds. Oh. Um yeah, um and then there's there's like um and then when you like when you get like a, a professional contract, you sign into um, fight like it. There's a time difference in the rounds as well. So uh, rather than it being a three minute round, it'll be a five minute round instead. Um, it'll be like three five minute rounds, um, and then again championship fights be five five minute rounds. It's um, yeah, it's slightly different to boxing. Um, obviously boxing like they start off with like four rounders and then six rounders and then like you say like 10 12 rounders depending on mm. the, the levels but yeah championship fights five rounds so fingers crossed you you win your fight on the 19th of march yeah. and that would make you world yeah world yeah. With, yeah yeah is, is that within that organization presumably? yeah yeah that that's it yeah that's within that's the battle Do you then, will you then have an opportunity to fight the champions of other associations um I'm, yeah i mean i'm guessing so i mean to be fair i'd fight the champions of other associations now do you know what i mean yeah like we, we always ask we always ask for tough fights um but it's just whoever whoever wants to fight and then whoever you know the promoter thinks is right i guess um, but yeah, I think when I win that title, you know, it'll open up some doors for me, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, get some get some bigger fights. Um, you know, but yeah, all, all being well, I mean, I'll, I'll win the fight, hundred percent. I'll win the fight. I'll get that fight uh -huh. finished. <laughs> I will, mate. I'll get that fight finished. You're bleeding better. <laughs> yeah. Have you um, have you ever come up against somebody who I wouldn't say you were necessarily fearful of? And, yeah. and I know you appreciate you've probably got a respect for everybody yeah. that, you, uh, that you do fight. Have, have you had, a, had an occasion where just prior to it, you've kind of thought to yourself, oh, blimey, he, he looks a bit of an handful, you know? Um, well, you don't have to last, No, <laughs> no. no I mean, do, do you know what, mate? Like, my last, my, last, uh, my, last, my last few opponents have been big lads. Mm. Um, you, you usually find that, like, um, in, in mixed martial arts, like, a lot of guys, like, they cut a lot of water so they're, they're quite big boys and then they cut a lot of water for make weight and then they'll put all the water yeah. back on it i don't cut a lot of water um you know i i, I just I, I just like fighting it as close to my natural weight as possible so my last yeah. few opponents have been slightly bigger you know i think um for, for me like I, I like you say i train hard and i'm always just competing with myself i am you know i always just think like i need to just go in there and i need to prove that i'm better than than last time do you know what i mean and and and, yeah. and when i was boxing um like my old man you say to me like you know if you want to be the best you've got to beat the best you know that's what you say to me so you know yeah. it, we were always like wanting wanting fight you know the best guys and you know the guys with the best records and whatever else and then you know you go in and, and beat them and prove that you're one of the best fighters so i think um i've never really been fearful of anybody and and size and stuff you know it, it, that doesn't bother me too much either. Um, you know, you, you always get like my mates, my mates and my missies and that'll come to me and be like, oh, you know, he's a big lad and he's a bit bigger than you and that, but it doesn't make it. Once that cage door shuts and that, you know, it's it's two men in there and, you know, you're going to have a knock and, and the guy with the best skill is going to come out on top, aren't they? Um, and like I say, as long as I perform better than last time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm winning, yeah. aren't I? Do you find, I'm intrigued, do you, do you find... That sometimes, if your if your aggression kicks in too much, do you tend to stop thinking about your tactics, and, and, and can that be a bit of a weak, you know, a bit of a, a weak spot, so to speak? Um, I've I've seen it I've seen it happen for me personally. Um, 
it, it, it's not. Um, okay. But I think that's just through experience. You know, like I say, when, when literally like my, my first my first fight, like I say, was in that park at like six years old and I've never stopped fighting since. Mm-hmm. Um, on uh, You know, and, and uh, you know, I, I, had, I had a lot of boxing matches, a lot of kickboxing matches, you know, during the time I was kickboxing. So, um, you know, that little bit of control and stuff, like actually on a competitive um scale like it's it's pretty much under control you know i accept the fact that i'm getting in there except the fact that you know the, i'm gonna get hit at some point um you know and i accept the fact that things ain't always gonna go my way and i'm, I'm prepared for that so you know i always i always do manage to stay focused and, and stick to the game plan to be fair mm-hmm. so you're only a couple of weeks away now aren't you from the final yeah 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 that's it mate yeah um yeah um a week on saturday yeah do you sleep well the night before um, I've got a bit of a tactic to be fair, mate. So what I do is I make sure I have a like. So I'm fighting on the Saturday. I make sure I stay up as late as I can on the Thursday. Right, right. So, and then get up early on the Friday. Yeah. And then I, I manage to get a bit more sleep on the Friday. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just starve myself a little bit of sleep so I can have a nice sleep on the Friday. Yeah. And yeah. after the after the fight, not necessarily the same day, obviously, but say the yeah. next day, do you, you treat yourself? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. You know what, mate? Like, I'm just this. This is the other thing as well, right? Like, because obviously, people who follow me on Instagram, obviously, they see like a lot of me training videos and I train every day and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that that is true. You know, I do train every day and I and I do diet and I do look after myself. But I am just a normal guy as well. Like yeah. you met me, Frank. You met me, didn't you, mate? Yeah. You seem to be ending in pints, all right? I must admit. Exactly, you. mate. You know, like like. Literally, like when I've not got a fight date, mate, I'm just a normal guy, mate. I'm good. I'm having a kebab. I, I'm it, it, a I could say to the viewers, he, he wasn't enjoying the alcohol. It was just, it was doing arm exercises. With, <laughs> yeah. With, 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 you with could say that. Yeah. You know what, mate? Like, but that, do you know what? That'd be bullshit as well because I do, I do love <laughs> a beer. <laughs> I do love a beer, mate. But, um, but yeah, I managed just curve it a little bit when I'm training to fight, because obviously, like, you know, I've got to take it seriously and, and lose the weight and stuff. But, yeah, you know, I enjoy myself. And my, my missus enjoys herself as well. And the last thing I want to do is impact, you know, like all, outside of outside of a fight campaign, you know, the last thing I want to do is impact, you know, her life uh, um, and, and my life and, and my family's life any more than what I already do when I'm, when I'm fighting. Yeah, yeah. They must worry about it, you must, not they? They must worry about yeah. it. It's yeah, nice. yeah, it must be. It must be lovely when you win, you know, and it's all celebration. But they must, yeah. even, so they must worry, mustn't? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You do, mate. You do, because you know it's when, when. I mean, when you say it like that, you know, it does make me realise like what what fighters do and what we do. It, it's it's it is a bit mad, you know. Like obviously, you're getting you're getting in a cage and and somebody's clicking the door shut and. You know, there's two trained men in there, like, and and obviously the stuff we train for. You know, you you train to inflict a lot of a lot of harm on somebody, and um, mm-hmm. when we're in it, you know, like when I'm in it and and like I'm training every day, and we're doing it in the gym every day. Um, you know, the, the team I'm with is a mint team, and you know we push each other. Um, it, it's called the Warfare Academy. Um, the lads at the Warfare Academy, you know, the, the good lads, and you know we push each other and we we spar hard and we fight hard. So when we're doing it every day towards it's just so normal, you know, yeah. like, but then obviously when you actually put the shoe on the other foot and, you know, if, if my missus come to me and said like, oh, I'm going to have a cage fight in, you know, 12 weeks time, like, <laughs> nah, I'd be like, no, you're not doing it. You know, you know I mean, in saying that though, so my brother, um, my, my younger brother, so my brother's four, four, four years younger than me. Um, so he, so when, when I first got into mixed martial arts, so just going back on to, you know, just re- skipping back a little bit. Um, obviously, when, when I was growing up and I was getting in a, a lot of trouble, obviously my brother was watching me, you know, because naturally you, you look up to your older brother, don't you? Yeah. And, um, and then I noticed, you know, like he was started getting in trouble and stuff. Um, and, you know, that, that, was, that was probably a lot to do with, with, with me, um, you know, obviously he's got our blood he's got mine and my old man's blood so it's always in his blood but you know obviously he, he saw me getting up to no good and that and don't get me wrong I you know even I like when I when I was going out I'd take him out with me and that and he'd go to the football and he'd say to me oh, you know can I can I lend one of your jackets for the football and that and I'd never say no you know because I'd, I'd always be like yeah go on then mate go go the football and that um 
but anyways um so when i got into mixed martial arts like one of the other reasons was to try and like kind of get back on path of uh, being a positive influence as well you know it yeah. wasn't you yeah. know I, I i figured like my brother was getting in a bit of trouble in that and uh i thought like you know i'm could be could be a little bit of fault here um so you know i got back into mixed martial arts well i got back into mixed martial arts and i was kind of like trying to guide him and say look mate you know you're a good fighter like get yourself in this so anyways where i'm going with this my brother did my brother did have a cage fight um and talking about nerves like i have never been so nervous in my life like even when i fight but like you say like you when your loved ones are getting in there yeah. Like, oh my, it's it's like, you know, my brother's like come out and and uh, you know, like, I'm so nervous, like, and the, the case door is shut and I'm so nervous. And then my brother blitzed him like like <laughs> 20, 20 seconds, mate, blitzed him. <laughs> like, so like literally I couldn't control myself. So I've run in the cage, picked him up, put him on my shoulders, like, yeah. like absolutely well, loving life. Nice. Um, you know, and you know, my brother my brother's doing well, he's he's a good kid now. Um, you know, he's he's got his head screwed on, he's got a little and that, you know. Um, he's working hard for his family and that. Um, and my sit my sister's a, you know, a lovely girl as well. You know, she's got kids um, married to a lad in the army and that, mate. So all's good. They're all doing good. Brilliant. And what, what are you what are you currently doing employment wise? Yes, yeah, so I work in recruitment. Um okay. yeah, yeah, I work in recruitment. Um and again, this this was a like a, a decision I made like when I was going through that phase of my life where like I was a bit a little bit lost getting in a lot of trouble mm. kind of figuring out what I wanted to do you know like so I was I was building um and at, like I was getting used a little bit and building you know like getting a job and then getting finished and then you know winter had come and I'd have no money so I thought right what can I do that ensures that I always know where the jobs are at and you know like like if I'm giving people jobs then I'm always going to know where the jobs are and like, I'm always going to keep me, keep myself in work, you know? So I was thinking about what, what, what industry is there? And I was like, right, recruitment, let's try and get into that. Um, so I got myself a little sales job because I thought, how would you get into recruitment from being a brickie? How would you get into recruitment with no experience? So I got myself like a, a little sales job, like cold calling people. Um, like that was like horrible. Um, <laughs> and then, um, and then, like from that, then I went into like um, selling car finance, um, and, but then I was just basically what I was doing was I was building up my CV to get a job in recruitment, so that I could like, you know, I figured like, right, if I get a job in recruitment, then I'm always going to have a job. I'm always going to have work. I can mm-hmm. save some money and you know build myself a little life and that. So, and that's kind of how I found my way into recruitment, and that's that's still what I do now. Um, it's good. It's busy. It's stressful, but it, the hours are perfect for me with my training. Um, you know, I'm out the office at a reasonable time. I've got enough energy, like you know, because it's not physically draining, no. mentally tiring at times. So I've got a few grey hairs coming through in that. Um, but yeah, listen, I get... Don't be ungrateful. I'd like some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So what's your what's your? Well, listen. We know you're going to win. We know you're going yeah. to win on the night, Dave. So let's let's yeah. let's, let's get that one out of the way. Um, yeah. What are your aspirations after that? Are you going to see how you feel, have time to reflect, and then work out your your path beyond that in in, in regards to the uh, the fighting? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think you know f- fighting is a tough sport. You know it is, and I think you know you can never sort of look beyond your next fight and say. I'm going to be fighting um, for this or that or the other. Um, fighting's a tough sport in the in the in, in the context of like, you know, the the impact it has on on your life, you know, on your health. There's always yeah. like little injuries and stuff coming up. Um, you know, it's it's a stress it's a stressful sport. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that I'm I'm capable of of going a long way. I know I'm, I'm capable of. Um, you know, sort of fighting and competing with some of the best guys in the country. Um, for me, I just I'd like to carry on, carry on the journey. Um, and if I can get onto the shows that are like, you know, on TV and stuff, you yeah. know, like there's a lot more combat shows on that Channel Five yeah. and you know stuff like that. I think you know that that that'd be nice. Do you know what I mean? Because I think I've put a lot into it. You know, I've 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 gone. 
when you when you look at like the CV of some fighters, like the top top fighters, they've not even got the same amount of experience as what I've got. Do you know what I mean? It's just oh. that I I don't know whether it's you know like where I'm from. Like you know, I'm not from I'm not from Liverpool. I'm not from Dublin. You know, I'm just from Stoke. So like you know, like Stoke perhaps gets overshadowed a little bit. But I've been fighting like for 25 years. Do you know what I mean? So when I look at it that way, I do deserve a little bit out of it. Do you know what I mean? I do yeah. deserve the opportunities. And I think, you know, for me, for me family um, and, me, and, and me friends and that who've, who followed me and supported me, you know, I think it would be nice to, to get a big fight and maybe, maybe get something on TV and stuff. Um, so that, yeah, that's, that's where I won't go with it. Definitely. We always say this, we always say this because it's all our guests, you know, the criteria for coming on is we want, you know, real and inspiring people. And, yep. uh, and and you're definitely real, and you're definitely inspiring, and I know many you know young people, uh, particularly younger people, uh, which we, we you know we know they're prone to get into trouble. They'll, you know you've discussed it, I've discussed it numerous times, and if they can find a way through sport, with any sport yeah. or any activity yeah. for that matter, that you know that keeps them keeps them busy, it gives them some yeah. motivation, uh, you know, hopefully achieve achieve something for their own you know, their own personal good. Uh, yeah. That'd be fantastic. And people like you are doing that. People like you are inspiring people. You know, yeah, definitely, under- definitely, mate. Do you do know what, that. right? Just, just on that point, mate, if you don't mind me making the point, is that, like, no, it's it's peace of mind, right? So you, you, you're you always going to have a, a, a far better peace of mind if you're waking up on a Monday morning with, you know, like a weekend's worth of positives, you know, whether it be, training or playing a football match with a group of people or learning a new song on a guitar you're always going to feel better on a Monday morning than if you've been out and you know you've been fighting you've been arrested you've upset your message you've upset your, your family and you're going to wake up if, you know you're going to wake up on that Monday morning and you're going to want to drown them thoughts and the only way you're going to drown them thoughts is by doing the same shit again yeah so as soon as you can break that little cycle of those negatives, you know, you, all you want is the positives, you know, you're going to wake up, and you're going to feel better. And yeah, you know, you're right in what you say, Frank, you know, whether it be through sport or, or whether it be through, mate. Mm. Are you still all right with your old man? You still, you still yeah, mate. Pals? Yeah, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know what? He's a good bloke, mate. My old man is like, yeah. like where, 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 where we are, like, so yeah, like, because like my old man is like, he's, he was, always known as a bit of a scrapper, like a bit of an handful and that. Um, I remember him having fights, like growing up and that, like in there. When, when, when we bought the house, well, when we bought the house, when my old man bought the house where we grew up, yeah. he actually had to, he, he had a fight, um, a, a prize fight, a bare knuckle prize fight um, mm. to, to, to secure the deposit for that house. But anyways, uh, where I'm going with it is that although, you know, he was, he was known as like a little bit of a scrapper in that round here, the one thing that everybody always said to me was that like he was one of the nicest blokes. Like, so I'd, I'd see people in the pub and they'd be like, you know, you're Johnny Mountford's son, aren't you? And I'd say, yeah. And they'd be like, you know what? Your old man is one of the nicest blokes. Oh, and um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I was getting to that, that, that sort of point in my life where I was on the borderline of becoming an idiot. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was on the borderline of people disliking me and I knew that. I knew that I could walk in a pub and, I, and people would walk out. And I thought, oh, like, you know, I, I wanted the same reputation as my old man, where people had, had shake my hand and, and say, what a nice bloke. And I've got that now. And it's dead nice, mate. You know, I yeah, can walk in yeah. any, yeah. any booze around here. And, you know, people can't believe, like, I, uh, you know, what a nice lad I am and that. And that that's come from my old man, that has. So, yeah, me, me and my mum were close, like, you yeah, know. Yeah, you've, really you've had some good schooling by the sound of it, and that's, that, that's nice. That's a, that's, yeah. that's, that's a nice yeah. legacy to carry on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly, mate. Yeah, exactly. My grand, yeah. granddad was the same. You know, my granddad was the same. He was he was like a like a, a bare-knuckle fighter on the fairgrounds and that, like, bit of a gypsy, lived on lived on barges, lived in caravans. Um, you know, like can't can't see past him in the family tree, like where he's from. Don't know, <laughs> like yeah. And uh, but he's the same. You know, like everybody loved him. Like um, so, I think it, you know, like luckily I managed to 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 see that that you know what, like that we're we're actually a nice family. Do you know what I mean? We're nice blokes, and uh, I wanted to go down that route rather than being a being an idiot and. Probably better. Um, 
it's got to be better. And again, me, yeah. look at the again. We go back to look at the example that you're setting. You know, there'll, yeah. be, people, there'll be people watching you. you know, yeah. And uh, hopefully, mate. And, and taking, and I'll be taking some influence from that. Well, listen, mate. As I say, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, nice, and, mate. I, and what I'm going to do now is, is, is again, we just like to to thank our sponsor, uh, Casual Minds, uh, and and the charities that uh, that we've mentioned. We're going to continue to support. Uh, we'd like to thank all those that, that, that follow the the podcast. We appreciate that. We like you know more subscribers, as I say, and and people to like the podcast because I think that's a bit of a show of respect for uh, not for us but for the guests. I mean, it's a bit of a sign of respect for them. They've 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 given up their time, uh, and, and and some of the things they've you know, they've confided in us with, you know, as you you know as you've done. They don't necessarily have told. I've not necessarily told that many people in the past. You know, so. So I appreciate that. I appreciate people's honesty, uh, you know, and how candid they can be when they appear on it. It's, and uh, but the thing is, you know, it's um, it's been your platform today, and we really appreciate you coming on. And uh, as I say, we wish you all the best beyond the nineteenth. But obviously, the nineteenth is a uh, is, is is a big day for you. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And, and we'll certainly be wishing you all the best, Chris. Yeah, that's for sure. And while we're at that's it. Nice. Give your young lady our best regards as well. From yeah, we'll do that. I keep saying to her next, next. Well. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll catch up for a little bit more training as we come. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mate, I, said, I said to me, said to me, we love London, mate. And we've yeah. been a couple of times like, and I said, said to her next time we're down, mate, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah that'd we'll be fantastic, mate. Well, listen, time, Chris, mate. Thanks for coming along, mate. I really appreciate it. Nice one, and Frank. We wish you all the best, pal. All right. Good speaking with you, mate. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Try, mate.